Shalom, Shalom Rastafari. We've just addressed a basic, we call it a basic um, understanding of uh, zeitgeist. What does zeitgeist mean and how important it is to get an etymological understanding or an overstanding of what a word, what is in a word and what a word means. Now, in the previous in the previous uh, video, let me just get this pointer right here. In the previous video, we touched on um, getting that basic understanding. And now in this video, here we go. In this video, we want to just recap briefly and then move forward to not just understanding so-called zeitgeist. Because when we understand what zeitgeist really, really is, not just the video, and not just the secret society group or group of um, different people who are about um, some steering committee globalists. It's a globalist so-called Illuminati group that I think um, former President um, Clinton, who's called uh, the first black president, that's, that's, that's a whole other kind of um, um, nonsense. But if it, is, if it is nonsense, pick sense out of it. Anyway, he's a part of, he's a member of this zeitgeist group. Um, the details about it will be forthcoming, or you can look it up on Google. But the basic thing was addressing the documentary or the video called Zeitgeist and breaking down what does Zeitgeist mean, checking out its etymology, and then going to the connotation or the connotative, breaking down what connotative means to note or together note, a together mark. There's a together mark. And one of the together marks we can say is, according to the Bible, the mark of the beast is, um, is uh, chi sti stigma, often interpreted as 666 is the chi sti stigma. And if you haven't didn't, done any research on the chi sti stigma, please do some. That's basically the Greek way of saying uh, 666. But it's interesting when you look at these, these three particular um, Greek um, letters and a, a, a letter that's not used so much, a real letter for the chi sti stigma or xi, um, I think xi, how, how, how do you write it? xi chi sti stigma. Anyway, th that's a, a whole other uh, a whole other research right there. But in English they call it, let's put this up here, in English they call it they call it um, a, a together, let's put together mark, like a collective mark. It's a collective mark, like 666 also is a collective, there's a collective mark, right? But the mark is not just a physical mark. See, a lot of folks are talking about the, the, the chip, and, and there's a lot to the chip that we need to know. So the information definitely is well worth it, but there's also a lot of hype that is put to it and a lot of fear that leads to the geist part or the ghost part or even the poltergeist, noisy rumblings of, and disturbances, the, the geist. And then we know behind this cows is the G host of the ghost, the G host. You understand? And the G, that's that Masonic G right there, and the host, not the host of the God and Father of our Black Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, but the Antichrist who seeks to stop the rise of the Black Messiah, bringing chaos and bringing confusion, or a general state known as Babylon from its root, Bob Baal, and then also the byproduct of that is Babal. Babel means gate of God. Babal means confusion. So here as well, we should just note this right here. Put the word Babal, right? We have the word Babal there. So these two, this actually leads to that. That actually leads to that, the Babal. Babal leads to this together mark leads to this connotation which is the antithesis or the opposite you understand of the etymology or the true etymos logos the true reasoning the true word 
Now, all this is a byproduct of zeitgeist, right? Or as it has been said and suggested, the zeitgeist. Because zeitgeist, they will tell you, it means spirit of the age. That's what the word means, spirit or the, the, the time of the age or spirit of the age or the time of the, the time of the age, so forth and so on. But or the time of the spirit, age of the spirit, really the age of the ghost. This is the age of the ghost because geist, in this word, which is a German word too, poltergeist, it means a polter, a disturbing ghost, a, 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 a ghost that causes noise and disturbance. Right? Or chaos. Or Babel. Now we have Zeitgeist, which really demonstrated to those who have eyes to see where they were coming from in the first part of it on religion. They went all the way back to Egypt and didn't even touch on the black Messiah. You, you, you see, that's, that's very interesting. They didn't really make the connections. I mean, they quoted from Gerald Macy. But Gerald Macy says a lot, a, 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 a lot of other things, too, that would be more helpful and more accurate, but that was not a part of their agenda. So we were some of the first to mention that briefly in some videos we did to that because a lot of folks were really hyped up, you understand, after they saw that. And it was turning them off to any idea of the real truth of the Bible. You know what I'm saying? The real origins, even the black origins and the African origins of the Bible. And these are black folks. These are people who would say they are Afrocentric, so forth and so on. And that, too, was part of the plot because behind it is the whole problem, reaction, solution. Now, when they give us a more expanded, they say that this is a trend. Zeitgeist is a trend. You know what I'm saying? A trend of thought and feeling in a particular period in a particular age and the zeitgeist basically would be one of the 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 key the key words in fact zeitgeist is the key word you understand because a lot of things if we see the movie or the documentary we'll say oh yeah 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 that was in zeitgeist zeitgeist said that zeitgeist said so forth and so on but what albert pikey now said and wrote about and albert pikey who was a civil war general and a uh, Freemasonic, um, you could call it the grandfather of, of, of Anglo-American Freemasonic um, orders. He's also responsible for the Ku Klux Klan in addition. And his monument is actually in D.C. And they have a monument for him in D.C., which is very shocking and ironic. But if it wasn't for the so-called Freemasonic and Illuminous associations, it would not be there. So he lays down a lot of the principles that now, if we are able to see, we are seeing it implemented here and there in an ever increasing, in an ever increasing fashion. Now we are the ones who are linking to the zeitgeist poltergeist. So we're making this zeitgeist and poltergeist connection, breaking down for the, the, the etymology of this showing that the word geis actually means ghost. So the definition is the spirit of the age. The more correct definition for zeitgeist will be the ghost of the age. And if we break down this word ghost, we see that it's g host. The g host is the ghost. So now we need to focus on overcoming this, this ghost of the age. You understand? This ghost of the age. Remember, even biblically speaking, there's a big difference between spirit and ghost. In fact, when it says that Christ walked on the waters, when he walked on the waters, the disciples thought they had seen a ghost. Christ says, I am no ghost. He says, I am no ghost. He never denied the spirit, the spirit of his God, my God, our God, his Father, my Father, our Father. But he denied being a ghost because if you look up ghost, a ghost means what? What's the definition of a ghost? A ghost is a disembodied spirit of a dead person. You understand? But more correctly, a ghost is a particular dead person who has sold their souls, you understand, or somehow has violated the universal, God's universal law, and they are not able to make ascension. They are trapped, they are earthbound so-called spirits, perhaps demonic spirits or, or spirits, their spirits has got involved with demonic spirits. Let us do this right here since we began in the first part. 
this is the overcoming. You understand? This is where we bring more light and illumination to overcoming the so-called spirit of the age. Let's first look up ghosts, if we will. Let's look up ghosts. So the word ghost, see, they don't tell you that. They don't tell you that it's a ghost. You understand? Instead, they say this means spirit. Now, here's ghosts altered prob probably after maybe FL. F f f well, we don't know which 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 particular. It says geese from Middle English ghoste, um, Old English gas. They say it's a soul spirit demon akin to the German geist, Indo-European base geist 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 to be excited. At its root now, zeitgeist or geist for ghost means to be excited, to be excited. And this is still in the etymological bracket, frightened, to be excited, to be frightened. This is the spirit of fear. When the Bible speaks about the spirit of fear that we have not been given a spirit of fear, this geist or the zeitgeist, is that spirit of fear, but moreover, it's derived from the Sanskrit, Sanskrit head or head, 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 which means to be angry, to be angry. This is very key for ones to take this down, take a note of this, or look it up as the disciples. And in this order, we use the the New World, um, the New, the Webster's New World College Dictionary. See, there is a new, we're in a time and an age of a new world order. This is greater than all the Illuminati, Satanistic conspirators all wrapped up together, even their predecessors and the dead ghosts of their past folk. You understand? It's, it's greater than all of them. You understand? However, if humanity can be redirected or rather misdirected, then the, especially at that key time or during the key time of it, it is possible, so they think, to ride the wave of humanity, just like in surfing, to ride that wave. Nobody starts a wave, but ones have to learn how to ride it. So they see this wave and current of people's thoughts, so they brought out this zeitgeist or had a lot of influence in the production of zeitgeist. And the, and the key area is the religion area because it goes along with what Albert Pikey is, the whole problem, reaction, solution, so-called reinterpreted Halegian, Halegian dialectics. In other words, the whole problem, reaction, solution, or this particular type of a trinity. It's a trinity. Even, it's the, you know, Revelation talks about um, that, that there was these, 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 these spirits that came out of, of the, I think, the false prophet, like three ghosts, or like, 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 like frogs or something like that. But we know that there's a true trinity, you understand, which is the trinity of the almighty, the true and blameless creator. And then there is the, the fallen angelic being or principle who sought to be like God. Lucifer or Satan who sought to be like God. Remember, Satan, the devil, according to the Judeo-Christian, even Islamic, did not want to bow to Adam. The devil never showed himself or demonstrated himself as being against the Almighty in the sense of in direct opposition to the Almighty, but to Adam, to Adam. Now, Adam, by virtue of interpreting the, the, the parable, would be the original black man. This is why COINTELPRO doesn't say to stop the rise of, of Christ or the Messiah, but it specifies the black Messiah because this is the only true Messiah that they are fighting against. And it also now demonstrates the place and the position of black men and the confusion that has been thrown on black people, i.e., how to make a slave. The reference is how to make a slave or the Woolly Lynch, the Woolly Lynch papers. Now, when we go on with this meaning of geist, which is ghost, it says originally the spirit, now, here's the connotative. Here's where we get into one, two, three, four, five, or more. It says, originally the spirit or soul, now only in give up the ghost, which means to die, and in holy ghost. Now, holy ghost is one of the worst areas of mistranslation, one of them, in the so-called King James Bible. In fact, everywhere we see that this is ghost, you should strike out the word ghost, and you should write in spirit. You understand? Because as long as you look at that word ghost, 
Even if you say, well, ghost to me means something. The word already has a vibration, has an energy that was in this orb before you or I or any of I and I were even born or incarnate, you know saying, in our present so-called flesh or, or carbon organic structure. So we have to recognize that. So a lot of folks will, will deceive themselves and say, well, to me it means such an, this doesn't matter what it means, there's an energy to that word. You did not develop this word, you picked up this word somewhere, and in your ignorance you want to give it your own meaning, but it already has its energetic uh, uh, convalence value, it has its charge. The word already has a charge. That means it already attracts certain things and it repels other things already by virtue of the word. You may be um, a good manipulator for a time, but the consequences of, of what's in it, the truth will catch up to you, in other words. The truth, the truth concerning, concerning that word or any word. So this is why it behooves us to learn the true meaning or the true logos of these words or the etymology of these words. And one of the best basic novice start out point source is the Webster's New World Collegiate Dictionary. You understand, with the etymological brackets first, and then as we are here, we're in the connotative. The connotation says, the supposed disembodied spirit of a dead person, conceived of as appearing to the living. Now get this, get this, get this carefully. Some think we're just speaking about the racial aspect, and it's not, it doesn't matter what race Christ was, and blah, blah, blah. That, that, that's just playing punk and coward. You understand? That, that's just like hedging your bets so, because you don't want to offend men and people. You understand? If it's already in your head and your heart, you should declare it as truth. Otherwise, on that day, it, it will be known that you do not be a witness. You, you're not bearing witness. You know the truth, but you don't want to offend men and people. Are they the truth? Are they life? Are they the creator? No, they're not. So defend the truth and speak the truth as you know it as the truth. But it says here, that the second connotative meaning says suppose, the supposed embodied spirit of a dead person conceived of as appearing to the living as a pale, as a pale, not a bucket pale, but pale like being opposite of black, opposite of, 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 of being reddish brown and, you know, ebony black, pale, i.e. a state of either the leper or the clean leper, the biblical leper, or the clean leper. No, Moses put his hand in his bosom. He brought it out, and he demonstrated the ghost. He showed you the pale or the leprosy, and then he put his hand back in his bosom, and he brought it out, and it returned to his other flesh. That's, that, that was a, a demonstration that requires some meditation if you haven't thought about it before. Why was he doing that? Here it says that, that this supposed ghost appears as a pale, shadowy apparition, a shadowy apparition. Thirdly, it says a haunting, a haunting memory, a haunting memory. Now when we talk about mind control, new world order, uh, trauma-based mind control, other programming things, you have to understand the word geist as in zeitgeist. You have to understand the word ghost. You know what I'm saying? What it's really about is a zeit heist. It's a zeit heist. They're trying to heist or rob or rip off the true new age of the black Christ, of the true Messiah, the, our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. They're trying to steal from God. This is where the Antichrist, basically the zeitgeist, and what's behind it, the so-called New World Order, their, their proposal, their attempts, you know, saying, at misdirecting and redirecting the, the trend of human thought, you understand, know, to be in a, a, a excited, afraid, and, and even angry. This is what Albert Pikey talked about, uh, how the Third World War would have to be about so-called religion or spirituality to get rid of the Judeo-Christian element. That was their main intent, to get rid of the Judeo-Christian element. Racially speaking, to get rid of the black element. You understand? Um, spiritually speaking, to get rid of a Judeo-Christian element. And this is where the zeitgeist, the first part of it, was the worst part of it. The second and third part of it was accurate, you understand, and overall well presented. But then when you compare those two other parts, you understand, it said that one-third fell from heaven. That's the one-third of the zeitgeist program that fell from heaven. 
You understand? Is the part that was on so-called religion. But anyway, be that as it may, fourthly, it says a faint shadowy semblance, inkling and inkling. The B says a slight trace, not a ghost of a chance, a slight trace, right? Then fifthly, colloquially, there's a ghost writer, somebody who writes on behalf of Miles. Optic TV, it says an, an optical or TV, um, it's an unwanted secondary image. What? A what? Unwanted. You see, so Caesar's Christ, the whitewashed so-called Jesus, Cesare Borgias, or Caesar's Christ, is an unwanted secondary image. So when you look at the Zeitgeist video, they're showing you latter whitewashed pictures of the Savior. You understand? And and this is all part of this this Zeitgeist of the Zeitgeist. Then it says verb intransitive to work as a ghost writer. It says to haunt to be the ghost writer, the ghost writer of. And then it talks about some other some other um words rela relating and then if you go down to ghost word it says a word created through misreading of manuscripts misunderstanding of grammatical elements etc and never really established in a language when you have ghost words this is a good one we're going to use this there are a lot of ghost words out there like the word god you understand really in its true sense is a ghost word you understand this word was According to definition, a word created through misreading of manuscripts, misunderstanding of grammatical elements, etc., and never really established in a language. These, like many connotative meanings, were not established in a language, but it's established in a particular period of time where there is a rise of ignorance, you understand, as well as the lowest of people to the highest of, of responsibility in society. You understand, and we're not saying this about our current president. In fact, it really fit our so-called former president. But be that as it may, um, it says ghoul. I want you to look down at where it says ghoul, ghoul, G-H-O-U-L. It's like in the Stargate um, series. They talk about a ghoul, a ghoul. You understand, a ghoul, right? A ghoul from Arabic ghoul is a demon of the desert. And it's derived from gala, gala. Or gala, 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 because they have the G-H. But really, it derived from gala. So gala, you understand, means to seize, to seize, right? And in Muslim folklore, it's an evil spirit that robs graves. <laughs> like they rob the ancient Egyptian, our Kamayan and black, Ethiopic, Ethiopian ancestors' graves. You understand? The, the spirit, an evil spirit that robs graves and feeds on the flesh, the flesh of the dead. Secondly, it's a person who robs graves. So that guy, um, um, that, that, that Arab guy that be always the, the keeper of the antiquities, the Egyptian antiquities, can't recall his name right, the, right, right now, but he's, he, he's a ghoul according to their own definition. A person who, who robs graves. A person who derives pleasure from loathsome acts or things. So we can see there's different levels of this, but the word ghoul should be associated with this. And this is all under the G hosts, the G hosts or the G ghosts, those who are part of this particular order, especially those who know what this order really is about, the so called Freemasonic, so forth and so on, the, Lumin, the, the Illuminati, so forth and so on. But that being that, I just want to give you some of the basic, the basic uh, definitions right here. So you need to get a get a copy of, uh, of of this. You need to get a copy of this now. Overcoming. How do we overcome the world? Because Zeit, we can actually say um, the spirit of the age, but in the biblical sense, the word Zeit would be the world the world, in, in the biblical sense of overcoming the world. Now, Romans, let's go to Romans for a moment, because we have to learn to not just wash our brain, we have to wash our minds. That means we have to be born again. So the solution to this present frozen psychological state of so much of humanity is through the true 
Christian life and service, where it says, I beseech you, Romans 12, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Now, this is interesting because we look at the state of the body. The body nowadays is, is, is it's being violated in so many ways. So many ways is the body, you understand, being violated and, and used as a, a loathsome, a lot of loathsome acts and, and hypersexuality and other sort of things and even the whole the, the, the gender bending and the confusions. Not talk, talking about those who might have been born a certain way, but everybody uses that language of being born a certain way. So there's a lot of general Babylon con chaos and confusion. Yovas. But now, remember this right here. We're saying, and be not conformed to this world, this zeit. Be not conformed to this zeit, to this world. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, the renewing of the mind state. Like when Christ says, one must be born again from above. As we were born initially from below, we must be born again from above. And here it says, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove, not guess, not assume, but that you may prove, be able to prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect, what's the key word? Will of God. What do they call their law? They call it the law of Thelema. The law of Thelema. Actually, the word Thelema actually means will, the law of the will. Then they say, do what you will. Do what you will. So at the opposite or the antithesis, the word of God in Christ says, be not conformed to this world. So, zeitgeist, what world does it really represent? What world? Some say it open up their eyes. It open up your eyes to Freemasonry, secret societies, a little bit of the 9-11 thing, the dollar bill, so forth and so on, but it closed your mind. So, see, when they talk about it, open up your eyes, where do we hear this before? We've heard this somewhere before. Hmm. Here's where the, the pictures should get a little fuzzy and everything. We heard this all before, like going back into a, a, a recall, you know, like where you're reflecting, remembering something. We heard this all in the Ganetta Aden, in the Garden of Eden. Haven't we heard the same sort of language? So a lot of folks would maybe be a little bit upset with I and I because they'll say, oh, that opened up my eyes. It opened up your eyes, but it closed your spiritual eyes. You see, zeitgeist may have opened up your eyes to things that you should have already been seeing, things that have been in front of you all the time, things that others have been saying even more effectively, giving you more proof and evidence and even solutions. Zeitgeist didn't really give any solutions. It basically said, this is what's going on. Um, this is the trend. Get with it. Think these things. Feel these things. You know, hang on, get ready for the ride. It didn't give any solution against it because it already got rid of the true solution in the first part by its mishandling of the so-called religion, the topic and subject matter of religion, which was in tune with Albert Pikey's whole agenda to begin with. If you look at the Third War, look up Albert Pikey where he talks about the Third War will be against religion and spirituality to get rid of this Judeo-Christian thing. They, they want to get rid of Judeo-Christianity. That is the main, the main thing about it. I'm not going to say uh, Islam because I don't think that they want to get rid of this Mohammedanism today. They don't want that. There's something very strange about this. Though there are some Muslims that have picked up the, the, the charge against the New World Order. We've seen some videos out there, um, the, the Arrivals, for example. If you've seen the Arrivals, it might still be out there. The Arrivals is one of them. Very good um, video done by some um, um, Muslim um, brethren, and they point to a lot of evidence and facts, you know, 
that have been out there before but gave a good presentation of it. So when you tell me that zeitgeist open up your eyes, I'm going to have to ask you, open up your eyes to what? Because have you really, really recognized what zeitgeist really means? And who is behind zeitgeist? Who is really behind zeitgeist? You know this, this always happens when a Democratic president or is in office, like when Clinton was in office, there was all these New World Order videos saying that he is the Antichrist, he's the devil, so forth and so on, right? And then when another president from the opposite side of the of the track or whatnot get in office, they say he's the devil, he's so forth and so on. You, you know what I mean? And this is a part of the poltergeist zeitgeist thing. Because the real schemes and conspiracies are continuing going on. It's just like Obama's in office now, and many things that he ran on because people were dissatisfied, and he said, I'm going to do something about the first day. And as soon as I get in, basically, he's had to sign just like his predecessors. There's a, there's a PBS video, um, the PBS video, um, Secret America, I think it's called Secret America, Frontline, Frontline PBS video. I think they might have it playing now on their channel, so check it out if you can. It's called Secret America. When you see this video, Secret America, it shows that there were things that were already in play from Obama, uh, not Obama's time, uh, Bush's time. And now Obama basically is is... It's trying to present the view that he's doing it somewhat unwillingly because he, given apolo it's apologists that basically Obama hasn't done what he said he was going to do. But part of the reason that he hasn't been able to do it is that the real wheels of government is controlled by a so-called secret Satanistic Luciferian cult. Whatever their names, they got a lot of names in different parts of their um, bureaucracy. There's a whole satanic and a demonic hierarchy. And this has been explained by ones like uh, Fritz Meister um, or, or, or let's see, Springmeister. Fritz Springmeister, excuse me. Fritz Springmeister explained that, and they threw him in jail, the whole Bloodlines Illuminati um, um, uh, author and, and presenter of that, which basically shows how all this was a long-standing conspiracy. And we'll find this conspiracy in its basic um, zeitgeist sense goes all the way back to the very beginning. You know what I'm saying? And you'll find that it wasn't this particular race or that particular race or this particular people or that particular people or that color or that religion or whatever that was the the initiator of it, that this conspiracy goes all the way back to the fall of HaShaitan. May he be cursed by the curse he was cursed with from the beginning. You understand? That with HaShaitan and his angels, or, or the, the so-called the devil or the Lucifer of humanity, the, the, the being that generations of of men and people call Lucifer sometimes, or the devil sometimes, or Satan. It's very good to understand what each of these names mean. And they always uh, ascribe to this being that they imagine these names. But then there's a real story behind it. And very interestingly enough, we've got some other books. don't know how many of these we'll be able to get into because um, we wanted to get into some of the Gnostic scriptures to explain how zeitgeist is really the counterfeit spirit that, that, that is spoken of in the early um, Judeo-Christian Gnostics spoke about this, the Nag Hammadi Library, another very important book, even though I would say that there are some prerequisites to these particular Gnostic books in order to be able to know what to um, look for because it's a collection of a lot of different... Gnostic is like being a Christian, just for, for example. There's all kind of Christians. Even if their back was against the wall, the Catholics would admit that they are Christians, even though they really are Catholic. They are Catholic first and then Christian secondly. That means they serve two masters, you know, which is a direct violation to the, to the, um, the master of the firm, you know, to the, to the uh, founder of the firm and the founder of the firm that's called um, Christianity or Christina already warned us about serving two masters, but they will say that they are this before they are Christian. You understand? Um, even I and I should, should consider more being Christian Ethiopian than just Ethiopian Christian. You know what I'm saying? Some of y'all probably would get it. Some are 
too used to the old wine to be able to recognize the taste of the new. But to understand, overstanding and overcoming this spirit of the age, or this counterfeit spirit, this world spirit, as Romans advises the true Christian not to be conformed to what this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now, here in the Queen of Sheba and our only son, Menulik, which we have been able to recently reprint and republish, so look for it at www.lojsociety.org. Click on the books link. And there's also free copies of it out there. You know, um, we cannot uh, vouch for, for each of the presenters, and some people do different things with their work, but we have published this work in its first and original form again. But here, this is another copy of it that we have, and this title is The Queen of Sheba and Olyson Minulik, right? And it's also known as the Kibra Neges, which is a uniquely Ethiopic document. In chapter 100, it speaks concerning the angels who rebelled. And this particular telling of it is much like much of the Jewish uh, Talmud, um, certain, the certain Talmudic stories of this in Islam. Islam also, I would say, um, tells this story. Some would say regurgitates, but it also tells this story that the angels who rebelled were angry with Adam. They were, they were angry and jealous of Adam. You understand? And the rebellion against God, the true God, Ha Elohim, you understand? The God and Father of our Black Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the rebellion against him was on account of Adam, on account of this man. Now, if you know the truth, then you know that the Adam that the Bible is speaking about, in its essence, was the black man. And so the rebellion against Adam in these latter days and times is often called racism or white supremacy or racial discrimination. And men have been trying man-made ways of overcoming it. But there's only one solution to it. First of all, you have to recognize what the real context of the problem. You can't just go off of one symptom. You have to get to the very, the very um, uh, source or the cause, you understand, not, not to allow the symptoms to deceive you because different symptoms can appear different ways and they can be from the same causative. So here in the Kippur Neges, chapter 100, we get to the very cause. And Satan, or rather, as he's yeah, he's called here, Satan. It's very interesting that in the Kibbutz and the Guest, chapter one hundred, it says this, and I'll quote it. It says, um, "For everyone who hath conquered is mighty, and he who is conquered shall be overpowered." Now, Satan hath no power whatsoever, for he hath only what he maketh to germinate, to germinate in the mind. And he cannot grasp firmly, and he cannot perform anything, and he cannot beat, and he cannot drag, and he cannot seize, and he cannot fight. He can only make thoughts, thoughts, such as the thoughts that have been, that have opened the proverbial eyes of many in zeitgeist, right? He can make thoughts do what? He can make he can, he can only make thoughts to germinate silently, silently in the mind. And he who is caught by the what? The evil mind. He prepared for destruction. So those who are caught up, caught by the evil mind are prepared for destruction. And if a man have conquered the evil mind, he findeth grace and hath a reward which is everlasting. And to you according to what you wish. Now, this was because um, the angels that rebel, who are known as Satan and, and, the, and, and the fallen angels, they asked the Almighty to give them bodies of flesh so they could prove themselves to be better 
and greater than Adam. In other words, the Targum, so they can prove themselves to be greater and better than the black man who God made the earth's rightful ruler. You know what Or the Arabic and Muslims say the Khalifa. They didn't want to bow to Adam. God said to all the angels, bow to Adam. He will be the earth's rightful ruler. I put him as earth's rightful ruler. And Satan, Shaitan and his minions, those who he was able to convince likewise, probably had a zeitgeist program then. And they basically said, we won't bow. But if you give us bodies of flesh and we are able to be men like Adam, we will prove ourselves to be better. So if black man can jump and white man can't, he learns to jump. That's a, another way of explaining it. If, if black, a black man can dance and white man can't, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you, you can see it all through this whole so-called matrix. You can see it going way back. There seems to be this enmity and jealousy and this um, pathological need to outdo the original man. And this goes all the way back to the fall from the Shemayim. So here, the Almighty is saying to Satan and his angels, or the devil and his angels, the rebellious angels, and to you according to what ye wish, there shall be upon you the mind of a man and the body of a man. So is the devil a man? In a sense, he has taken to himself by virtue of possession a certain group of people, and we can see this in white supremacy, in this evil that is known as white supremacy, which has not gone away. All they've done is taken off one mask, and put on another mask. You know what I'm Like they say, it's the new Ku Klux Klan. Now they actually have black friends and so forth and so on. And they don't run around saying nigga, nigga, nigga and carrying an carrying a, a obvious noose, but they do it in a new, a new way, in this new age. It took them a while to recognize it's a new age, so they had to upgrade. So you see the Klan and a lot of these same old-time demoniacs and racists and others have just changed their game. And that's all they did. They just changed the cover story. And maybe they put black people in the front office, you understand, so that, and give them a job, you understand, and pay them a lot of money. And these Negroes sell their souls. But take good heed to yourselves that she transgress not my words. The Almighty told Satan, the devil and or, or the fallen angel and his fellow angels told him, take heed, pay attention, don't you hear, hear this, don't transgress, transgress not my word and break not my commandment and defile not ye yourselves with eating and drinking and fornication or with any other thing whatsoever and transgress ye not my word. Now, it's going to pick up. In this area, the 100th chapter of the Kivra Neges, or also known as the Queen of Sheba, and her only son, Minulik. You need to really study this 100th chapter. We're not going to go into the entirety of it right now, but it is good enough that we are pointing you in the right direction. You need to take some personal responsibility, find this, study it, and look at it, and then put this into context of what we're saying right here, and you'll see how it all connects. In fact, just a little bit more to show even the link in what we're witnessing in this present end of one age on the cusp of the beginning of another age. But who will ride that new age, the wave of that new age? This is what the whole zeitgeist thing is about. They want to ride this, so they casting this this kind of fear. You understand this phobia. You understand this 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 um. They are destroying imagination. You understand using outer technology, than inner technology, than the inner wisdom. They they're making people like slaves, in other words, to the machine. Um, and it's all about time and space. It's all about time and space. Many feel that there's a loss of time. And in a sense, when we are too caught up in that, that, that way of thinking, that it paralyzes us, we really need to pray and meditate and, 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 and to ground ourselves again. So there's a fight over space along with loss of time, both down here and even above there. But there's a fight over space. You understand when you look at real estate in the sense of real estate, 
and, and, and crowding everybody in to these cities because of the witchcraft that has been put on the money. So people are leaving their farms and their lands so they can live in a particular image or a particular evil imagination, right? And this is all about not creation, although it seems very creative. It's about wreck creation. But the next paragraphical of the section in the Kebut of Neges that is concerning the angels who rebel, it says, and straightway they were given to them with his word, flesh and blood, and a heart of the children of men. And they, ca and they were content to leave the height of heaven. These fallen angels now, we're going to the very beginning, because we talk about how is it going to end. We first have to understand, well, how did it all begin? If we don't understand how it all began, then we don't really have an inkling you know, into how it's all going to end. Because the beginning and the end, even with that symbology of the serpent biting its own tail, is true according to its type and the proper interpretation of the type. So these are, were the angels that were content to leave the height of heaven. This is where we find in the book of Jude. If you look in the book of Jude, it says that the angels that left their first estate. These are the angels that left their first estate. So all of this they, they've taken out of the the library or, or the access, you know what I'm saying, of middle-of-the-road Christians. Because a lot of the Christians are still in the middle of the road. Part of it is, is an ignorance problem. Part of it is an error problem. And then part of it is an envy, an envy problem. For those who know the black truth of the black Messiah, they have an envy problem. So it puts them into another another level of, of psychical and, and rebellion and rebellious action against that truth that they know and still submitting themselves. So they have the evil spirit of Satan and his angels or his Decepticons who was decept deceived with him who did not want to bow to the black man or biblically speaking, they didn't want to bow to Ha-Adam. You know, saying ha Adam. So here it says, and they were content, these fallen angels, to leave the height of heaven, and they came down to earth to the folly of dancing, to the folly of dancing of the children of Cain. What? They had dance halls back then? Maybe they were dance caves. You understand? But they, they had dancing back then. I'm sure they probably really party. We don't think about the ancients doing essentially the same things that we see people doing today. We think the ancients... You know, we get this false, because they, they, they seek to destroy our imagination. You, you see, they seek to destroy our imagination. They're like, don't think about it. Let us give you a false image of it. That's what they do right there. Let us give you the way we want you to think about it. So these angels, they came down to the, to the folly of the dancing of the children of Cain, of Cain, with all their work of the artisan. So all their work of the artisan. Artistic craft. Everybody now wants to be an artist, want to get their 15 minutes of fame, which they had made in the folly of their fornication, which they had made in the folly of their fornication, and to their, their singings, their singings, which they accompany with the tambourine and the flute and the pipes and much shouting. They had a lot of shout-outs. They had shout-outs back then. There ain't nothing new. There's nothing new under, under, keyword under the sun, and the loud cries of joy and noisy songs. Sounds like they had the hip-hop and the same things that we got popping up today. And their daughters were there, and they enjoyed the orgies. They had orgies without shame. Do you know that most of these orgies take place, a lot of them take place right there in the club? Anyway, um, some of you all know, some of the parents and others probably don't know. But anyway, this is one of the reasons why when we recognized that was going on, when we used to be in the clubs and then went to some of the little back rooms and saw people snorting and people sex and people do, we, we actually stopped going, we stopped going back then because it was like, it was wild because there was a lot of these secret little, these secret little concaves and, and little caves in the club where a lot of crazy stuff, I'm sure even people probably were being abducted, still are, for they scented themselves for the men who pleased them. So they had fragrances. And when you look for this, you can actually see today's, the likeness in today's world. So how ironic is that? You understand? This was written before we have seen this increase in lawlessness. You, you know, this, this, this increase in
this increase in the mystery of iniquity. For they centered themselves for the men who pleased them, and they lost the balance in their minds. That's, that's, a, that's, that's deep right there. They lost what? The balance. They lost the ma'at. They lost the balance where? In their minds. They lost the balance in their minds. And the men did not restrain themselves for a moment. This is what we, every day on the news is talking about some man is grabbing or, or feeling up on some woman or, you know, like they, they had this guy that was going around squeezing women and pinching their butts or something. Then people doing even worse than that. The men cannot restrain themselves for a moment. But they took to wife from among the women those who they had chosen and committed sin with them. For God hath no resting place in the heart of the arrogant. This is the key. It says that God, which is to say the truth, has no resting place. It may pass through like a, a traveler or like a pedestrian, you know, but they, can, they don't rest in the hearts of the arrogant. Truth does not rest in the hearts of the arrogant and those who revile. Those are the haters. Today they call it the hate. And they spell it out on the texting with the H, the, the numerical 8, and the R. That's why I hate tar, hate tar, you know. But anyway, the people become more and more ignorant. They can't spell. They're lazy. They don't have much time. So that's the way they do it. But he abideth in the hearts of the humble and those who are sincere, those who are truly inclined, you know what I'm saying, and inclined to the truth. And he spake in the gospel, saying, Woe be to those who make themselves righteous and despise their neighbors. They despise their neighbors. And when you look at that, it comes down to that everybody who is on the face of this earth in one way or the other is neighbors to everybody else. So, and again he saith, God loveth the humble, and he holdeth lightly those who magnify themselves. And now you can compare this um, with um, Matthew chapter 23 and 13 and Luke chapter 18 and 9. 18 and 9. Like we said, there's more to this. But this is the real background on this drama that is being unfolded virtually before all of our eyes. We are all witnesses to this. So how do we exactly, how, how do we overcome this? You said, how do we overcome the world? Basically, it's overcoming the world, but it's recognizing that the world we're talking about is this world that was pulled over their eyes. In other words, this world that has been presented, you understand, especially those of us who are living in the cities, for example, in the cities is, is, is where they really are the gods of their world. We can see that they don't control the earth, you understand, with all the floods and storms and hurricanes, because why would they do this to themselves? Of course not. They would do this to all their enemies, and they could control these things. Some people say, well, they, they're, they're tampering with it. Well, no doubt. No doubt that they are temp tampering with it, because they said their iniquity is reaching the heights of heaven. You understand, they, they, they are bringing down their own destruction. But one of the places to begin in the overcoming of the so-called zeitgeist, the ghost of this age or the ghost of these last days of white supremacy. It comes down to that front and, sim front and center. You understand? Know Very simple. Simply. It comes down to this about, and it's not against so-called all white people. You see, it's not, and, and some of the white people actually know it themselves. They almost, they even express a shame to have to say these things because you look at them and you're like, you're white. Why are you talking about these people? And you're also saying that there's a, there's a, a pathological, really it's a, it's a demon possession, racism, especially at its extremes. You know, some black folks may consider themselves racist or some people may consider black people racist. You have to understand when somebody's reacting, you understand, reacting to an evil and maybe overacting. You know, saying to the to this evil because a part of that that PTSD. See, we have to put this into the reality too. Many black people, especially black people, especially the lost sheep, they suffer a heightened level of what clinically is called PTSD, post traumatic stress, um, post um, 
traumatic stress disorder. You understand? And how to make a slave in this sense is where it begins. You understand? That's where it basically begins right here. So, 